Epidemics of infectious diseases have occurred throughout history. The sciences of epidemiology, microbiology, immunology, virology, and genetics have evolved to increase our understanding of how and why epidemics occur and the forces of nature and people which contribute to their development. Control measures were established over time to deal with epidemics. These measures included quarantine, disposal of victims' bodies and contaminated possessions, and the manipulation of the environment to decrease the likelihood of the spread of the disease. Epidemics of influenza, the plague, smallpox, syphilis, yellow fever, and malaria have all contributed greatly to the study of epidemiology and the development of more effective strategies for the prevention and control of infectious diseases. Outbreaks of old, previously controlled infectious diseases and newly emerging infectious diseases are occurring globally. Nurses more than ever need to enhance their knowledge about communicable diseases, their pathophysiology, and the patterns of disease occurrence and distribution within populations. The following case study illustrates the development of an infectious disease outbreak. There are questions posed to you about this scenario that you will need to answer and submit according to the directions with the questions in the folder named as Infectious Disease Video Case Study. Hi, James. Hi. I'm Ms. Price. I'm a registered nurse here. And I'm going to be seeing you this morning. What okay. brought you into clinic today? Uh, I'm kind of feeling real sore and got headaches. I'm kind of tired. Achy. You mean muscle yeah, aches? Yeah, yeah. And you... stomach's kind of upset. Okay. How long has that been going on? It's been like a couple days. I think it's been like three days. Is it getting worse? Or... Yeah, the day was definitely the worst okay. day. Okay. Well, let me... Take the temperature and see okay. what's going on here. Are you living in the dorms here? Yeah, on yeah, I live, in, I live in Cooper. Okay. How old are you? Uh, just turned 19. Okay, are you a freshman here? Yes, yeah, second second okay. semester. Let me take your temperature. Well, your temperature's a little bit elevated. Okay. Has anyone else been feeling sick? They, uh, are one, your friends or uh, in the dorm? Yeah, I live with a couple guys, and uh, one of my friends uh, was feeling kind of bad. I haven't really talked to him too much lately, but we were all supposed to go out the other night, and I don't think he was able to go. He said okay. he was feeling bad. I didn't go either. You didn't go either? No. Okay. Get your blood pressure. Are you seeing a doctor for anything? Getting uh, any medications? I, no, I, I don't. I don't take anything. I usually try not to. Okay. But um, yeah, I haven't seen a doctor in a while. Did you say you'd taken anything for the way you feel? I mean, I took like some Tylenol. Okay. But nothing more than that. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and, and just check your glands. Okay. okay. Does it hurt at all? It's a little sore. A little sore. Around it here? Yeah. Trish, I've just seen a 19-year-old male student. He came in with a chief complaint of malaise, kind of flu-like symptoms, muscle aches, headache, uh, poor appetite. He said he got sick over the last 24 to 48 hours. He's living on campus, and one of his roommates also is feeling sick. And when I checked his neck, he had some real significant lymphadenopathy in the neck. His left parotid was enlarged and tender, and his temperature was 101. Uh-oh, Leander, I'm afraid we have maybe an outbreak going on because I've just seen two patients, students with the same thing. One was oh. a male, 20-year-old. He had one side parotid enlargement, had a temp of 100. The other was a 19-year-old female who had both sides enlarged. 
Where does your student live? Well, he said he lives in Cooper Hall on the third floor. How about your patients? Where are they? My male student lives in, on the fourth floor of Cooper Hall, and my 19-year-old female's in Smith Hall. I'm beginning to wonder if we've got a situation developing here, like an outbreak of mumps. If so, uh, we need to let the health department know and the president know. You know, we've only been back from fall break for three days. We've got students coming in from all over the state, from other states, traveling in different ways. I'm going to go back and see where James traveled from. We might need to call the dorm directors and let the resident yeah. advisors know what's going on. Okay. The nurses think they are seeing the beginning of an outbreak of mumps. The questions in the folder for this case study will guide you to explore why outbreaks of O diseases are occurring. You will need to use outside resources to answer these questions with sufficient detail. You will need to go to the questions folder for the case study and answer the questions in section one. One thinks of mumps as a controlled disease because of the recommended vaccination with MMR. The baseline 20th century annual morbidity of mumps was 152,209 cases. With the development of an effective mumps vaccine in 1967, the United States has seen a steady decline in incidence. By 1998, the annual morbidity had decreased by 99.6% to only 606 cases. In my five years at the College Health Service, I have not seen one case of mumps until this time. Now in 15 days, we've seen over 175 cases. With 16,000 students coming to the campus, we've had significant numbers of infected students. Well, I've seen some mumps outbreaks in the distant past, but nothing like this one. In the last week alone, we've had six people in the hospital, one even in ICU. I think we're beginning to contain it, though, because I only saw three people with a diagnosis of mumps today. But there were really some situations involved with all those nursing students before they went into clinicals. I'm really grateful to the health department and the team from CDC who came to help us. I know everyone has been focused on the monitoring and control of the outbreak, and we're not the only campus or state affected by it. The CDC personnel have already been working on identifying the index case or cases. I heard one of them say two students of our first four cases had traveled by air to return to campus. It'll be interesting to see if they brought it from their hometowns or if they had contact with someone on the aircraft with the mumps. In 2006, the first major outbreak of mumps in 20 years occurred in the United States. There were 2,600 cases in 11 states between January and May of 2006. Between May and October of that year, over 3,000 cases were identified. 11 of the potentially infected patients had traveled on 33 air flights, exposing more than 500 passengers to mumps. Previous to 2006, mumps cases had been at a historically low rate. In the previous five years to 2006, there had only been 265 cases of mumps reported each year in the United States. Kentucky was a border state to two states who had confirmed cases of mumps during 2006. The outbreak could easily have spread to this state. Old and new infectious diseases can emerge and reemerge. Nurses and other health care providers must be ready for these outbreaks. The last section of case study questions will guide you to explore some of the issues surrounding the outbreak of infectious diseases.